Hi, this is Jake at Canadian Cutting Edge. Today we're going to take a look at the Gonzo 701. This knife has a very unique blade. There's very few knives out that look like it. So without waiting any longer, let's bring you on down to the bench top where you can take a good look at this knife. All right, here we have the knife. Uh, the first thing that uh, I'd like to tell you is obviously this one's black. The knife also comes in green and a color that they call yellow. Um, something might be lost in the translation. We would probably call it a light creamy brown. So that color, green, it's a darker kind of uh, forest type military green and this black. There's also a version where there's a black blade with the black G10 scales. That one's really hard to find in stock anymore. I have not found it in stock anywhere for that matter. The knife is right around $16 from places like Gearbest, Fast Tech, uh, other places they are all roughly the same price, right around $15, give or take a few cents for different places. I've really liked carrying this knife for the last while, um, in large part because it's a very comfortable knife to hold and because the blade style not only has a coolness factor to it, it's a uh, blade that's very functional for certain types of tasks. And one of the tasks that it's very functional for is the task that we, most of us, end up using our knives for. Um, we don't use them tactically. We don't use them, you know, in cooking. We use them on tree products. That is paper, cardboard, maybe sometimes whittling on some wood. And for paper or cardboard, this knife does the job easily and with style. Gonzo knives. All right, this uh, knife has an access lock. Um, and in this case, it came just perfect. I needed to do no adjustments at all on it. It just flicks open and closed with ease. Even underneath this uh, tripod, Thing, it's easy to flick open and closed. Um, there was nothing to do with the pivot at all and I was very glad for that because as you can see the pivot hardware has a proprietary faster on it. Thankfully we didn't need to do anything to this knife to make it silky smooth and you know it's nice and free the knife just slides open and closed. I'm using my fingernail here and very low pressure and I can slide it back and forth when I've got the access unlocked. Uh, my camera is just not focusing very well today. I wonder what that's, what's up with that. Sorry about that guys and gals. Uh, let's move on. The blade. 440C steel like almost everything else Gonzo makes. Very nice steel. Takes an edge. Keeps an edge and cuts like crazy. Profile is a um, flat grind with like a three-quarter flat grind with a flat area up here where the uh, name label is. Uh, so it's easy to put those clamping tools on if you've got that type of sharpening system. Uh, this edge here is completely flat in terms of you won't be able to rock a cut. And then after taking a 30 degree turn, I'm just estimating um, that part is perfectly flat as well. So it's got a spear point tanto-ish style tip, blade shape, profile. I don't know what to call it, to be honest with you. I, I like spear point, uh, but there's absolutely no sharpening on this half. And the blade stays nice and thick, right close to the tip. The tip is very strong, very sturdy. Um, I don't have my wood with me to do my test of jamming it into wood and prying it. Um, and that went just very well when I did that test. Uh, let's see what else we could say about the blade. Oh yes, 
the the hardness 58 on the Rockwell scale roughly the blade is nine and a half centimeters long which is roughly three and three quarter inches and it's about one inch deep this way that's about 2.6 centimeters when you fold the knife it's uh, almost 11 and a half centimeters long which is right around four and a half inches and when you open it it's about 20 centimeters long and that equals you know a little under eight inches seven three quarter inches something like that 132 grams in your pocket not much weight it uh won't hold you down in your pocket at all. That's uh, four and a half ounces, something like that. A very common weight for a folder. Open pillar construction at the back. So uh, very easy to clean out. The pillars, if we can get a nice focus happening here. There they go. They've got a nice rounded profile and uh, they hold the knife just fine. If you look in there, you can see that the G10 wraps around and onto the scale so the scales are not visible uh, on the outside of the knife very easily except for this top portion by the uh, pivot that's got the jimping on it. So unlike a lot of Gonzo knives um, they're hiding the uh, liners in this one and it makes for a really nice look and they've rounded the edges very comfortable in the hand. This front uh, choil offers a lot of uh, purchase, a lot of grippiness. Uh, when you're using the knife, your finger, your hand won't slide up over this towards the blade. This is just too substantial here. There's a nice swell in here for the palm of your hand to rest in. And then your entire hand, if you've got a hand that's large like mine, easily have that four finger grip. So uh, even larger than my hands will find this knife quite comfortable. And most of, uh, you know, small, medium-sized hands as well, because it's nicely rounded, will find this comfortable knife. Um, for decoration, they've got three, well, roughly an inch long um, trenches that they've drilled or milled into uh, the scales here on both sides. You can take the clip and move it on either side, uh, right or left, um, tip up carry, which a lot of people like. It's a relatively deep carry with uh, you know with the clip rounding rounding here so not even you know not even a centimeter sticking out a uh, quarter of an inch or so would be visible and this black clip is in flat colored paint so it's going to be largely non-reflective the clip strength is just how I like it it's uh, grippy enough to keep the, the knife in your pocket, but uh, not so much so that it's going to give you any challenge or difficulty pulling it in or out. Some of you may have noticed that there's no lanyard hole. Uh, it doesn't really need one. This pillar is far enough back and it has enough clearance. As you can see, when this knife comes closed, the edge of the blade comes right across here where my finger is. So there's a lot of clearance to put a lanyard on that end pillar. As long as you uh, cinch it up a bit, it'll be just fine. This is the perfect kind of knife for somebody who, uh, you know, say you work in a warehouse or something and you do a lot of breaking down of boxes. Um, I, I did a lot of cardboard cutting with this knife. I believe it cuts better and more efficiently than your traditional style of uh, utility blade. Um, I estimate that uh, this edge will last four times as long as uh, your uh, clip, as your as the knife utility edge will last, uh, because this kind of steel is is really soft. The edge goes away quick, um, so you can flip this blade around and use the other side. That's two uses. So I'm saying four uses, two of these blades, utility blades, the edge on the gonzo is gonna last at least that long. Um, your mileage may vary depending on, you know, what's in that cardboard, what types of glue they used, how thick it is. You know, of course there's all kinds of variables. And so that's just a rough estimate. This is a very comfortable knife to carry. Nice and light, 
very good grip. I'm surprised that it's been out for so long and I can only find two or three reviews in English. And uh, it's got such a unique, aggressive looking blade. You know, it's got that um, swedge across the top, the unsharpened swedge on both sides and it comes down. Just for the coolness factor alone, this is a good knife to add to your uh, collection. But once you've got it, you're gonna wanna carry this knife and it will do the job. The jimping that's on the uh, knife blade is very sharp and aggressive. Your fingers are gonna get, your thumb's gonna get tremendous amount of, of traction on there. So if you're doing hard cutting or if you're doing some delicate work, you're gonna have more than enough control with that uh, jimping up there. And the jimping down here is pretty good too. If you're just using that, you've got enough. Holding the knife like this is more than adequate. And the thumb studs I didn't talk about, they're, I'll zoom it in a little bit here so you can take a look at them. They're basically pillars with three little steps on them. Um, one complaint I have about this knife is the location of the this little cutout for your thumb. It's both too small and not in the most optimal place. Um, the cutting out of the swedge here where I'm showing with my moving thumb right now, that's pretty good for moving up. But if you do that, you still, I still don't find it to be quite the right spot to make it flip open with any uh, conviction. I come down right between those two little uh, cutouts and flick it out with my thumb. So of course the size and shape of your hand has, you know, everybody's got slight differences. You may find that it works perfectly for you, but as I'm demonstrating now, even if it's not perfect for you, uh, it'll still work just fine. It's just a small thing that could be made a little bit better. So it's fully ambidextrous. It's a good size, good shape, good weight, a good choice. Remember friends, if you like these videos, click on like, subscribe, share with your friends, but most importantly, whenever you're using a knife, cut towards your chum and not your thumb. Bye now.